126th Contact, Saturday, January 26, 1980, 1.53 am. Billy says human child, it has taken a long time before you've dealt with my request. Semiaza says sure, nevertheless, I told you at our last meeting that our contacts will now be even sparser. Billy says I know, but does it really have to be like that, if I have very important things that I necessarily must discuss with you? And is it also not possible that with important concerns, the conversations become transmitted anyway? Semiaza says we ourselves have also thought about that and have found that for such cases, it is appropriate in spite of everything, if we behave as before in this respect. And this, not for the sake of your group members, but for your exoneration. Since our last visit, we have dealt extensively and thoroughly with all incidents and events that have taken place since the 7th of April, 1977. Like never before, this time, we endeavored ourselves around everything and analyzed everything, where we even assured ourselves the assistance of other human races who have studied the Earth and its inhabitants experimentally and analytically. This very great work lasted for 35 days, which furnished us very remarkable results, however, and saved us decades of work. From the resulting analysis findings, we also came to the insight that in all that has happened during our cooperation with your group, we had been much more mistaken than what we were able to identify up to our last contact. Above all, it was found that especially the reproaches made to you from our side were completely unfounded at all times, and our views did not coincide with the reality, so therefore, you have always acted correctly, even if the respective actions on your part seemed illogical to us. Only through the most recent clarifications has the cognition been given to us that your ways of acting and your doings were always right and logical, so namely in accordance with the conditions on the earth and with the human beings of earth. Unfortunately, throughout the whole time, we only looked at everything from our point of view, consequently, we had to see the matters incorrectly. But this mistake will no longer happen to us in the future, of which you can be assured. But now, this admission doesn't mean that something will change in our ultimatum, which we have placed until the middle of this year. Billy says you mean about a final breaking off of the contacts? I actually wanted to talk with you about that, also about the journeys to America of various members of the group. In addition, I must say that you already made similar statements before, but apparently learned nothing from that. Hopefully, you have now understood everything correctly. And how does it stand with your ultimatum? Semiaza says the given explanations retain their validity, except with Jihan, with whom it was found out that he will be powerful enough to integrate himself into the group after all, if he honestly strives for it, without him taking damage. For the other specified group members, however, the determination remains, so thus for Elsie, Madeline, and Benedette, but with Madeline, it can come to a time postponement because she must undergo medical treatments that are quite lengthy. Billy says you know that already. Semiaza says sure, it became known to us by way of the recordings. It is to be explained further now because it stands in lack of clarity, as conversation recordings from your center show that Benedette should go to America for two to three years not only because of the reason that was mentioned in an earlier statement, but still for several other reasons, which are closely related to her development and her integration into the group. Moreover, another important reason was mentioned to you in February of last year, which would express itself in an in-depth form towards the end of the year. This was the important matter, that Benedette would yield herself, an increasing lack of control, to a euphoric infatuation which could bring various difficulties for herself as well as for the one involved. So has it also arisen under a different time frame, from which she has gained no progressive cognitions, However, thus, that which was calculated by us at the beginning of last year has now happened, and she has fallen to a new, unreal being in love. And truly, it is also in this case only an unreal being in love, without deeply founded and permanent values. This was already explained to you at that time, and unfortunately, 
This incident has arisen much earlier than what had been calculated by us. Due to a date error, this event wasn't scheduled until 1981, but now, it's already made its appearance. Billy says I am still able to remember this warning well. But now, what is the reality of this with the two already together in previous lives as other personalities and perhaps even married to each other? Semyaza says they first met each other a few centuries ago as other personalities and became quite good friends. But they never had close relations before, and also not after that, which we have clearly determined in the meantime since our last contact. Earlier results were, unfortunately, not quite right because we proceeded from certain wrong assumptions, which resulted from our unknowledge towards the human beings of this world. But truthfully, the two of them, with which I address Bernadette and Engelbert, were never closer together than in a good friendship between two families, over approximately 38 years. But more wasn't to be noted, and since then, the two met for the first time again in your group. Billy says but that's strange, I think. Bernadette and Engelbert have scouted out different things during the meditation, which supposedly purport otherwise. Semyaza says you say that because it's all really only supposedly so. In truth, Benedette is so very sensitively inclined that she stores everything moving inside her so strongly in herself that these matters break through into her consciousness during the meditative exercises, and indeed always exactly according to her most secret desires. So if she sees such things, then these are usually made visible by her own desires and her own imaginations which have nothing to do with reality. The recordings of the meditation room have determined this unambiguously and have made this clear. Billy says yes, and what about Engelbert? After all, he has, just as he told me, seen things that practically coordinate themselves with those things seen by Bernadette. Semyaza says he, too, is very sensitive, and moreover, he is very much under the influence of Bernadette. So it is only logical if he takes in certain vibrations from her and then equally processes these as she does, so that inevitably, an equation must arise in the pictures they've seen. Billy says oh, so that is so. I didn't know that. I just wonder how I should now make that clear to both of them. Semyaza says that won't be necessary because in the future we will openly discuss all these things and transmit them as reports so everything will be accessible to each group member, at least, that which is intended for each one's knowledge. Billy says ah, that makes it much easier for me, which I can say calmly. Semyaza says I know, certain things are often quite difficult for you, if you have to say them. Billy says you can, indeed, say that. Semyaza says that is understandable to me. Billy says but is there not still another solution for Bernadette in addition to the journey to America? Semyaza says there very well would be one, and indeed in the same form as with Jacobus. She, too, should search for a suitable partner for herself and enter into a marriage with him. But this is also valid for Madeline and Johan, as also for them the burden of being alone presses on the shoulders in this form. Billy says I am somewhat surprised by your words, girl, because you once told me that you will never interfere in these matters. Semyaza says we also aren't doing that. We would never interfere in the close relations between two differently gendered group members if the things are rightful. What we're doing here however, is nothing more than giving advice. But if we've unofficially oriented you about all relevant issues so far, and will also continue to do so if we can maintain our contacts with you, then we have our reasons for it, moreover, it is necessary for you to know what takes place in your group circle. Billy says certainly, that has already often been useful to me, but occasionally, you also include occurrences that lie beyond the range of the registering device. Why do you do that, and above all, how do you accomplish that? Semyaza says laughing that's a very simple process every group member, who is registered as such by our apparatus, is incorporated into an escort BIM, 
which is of unlimited range and records all the psychic processes and feelings, but really only these forms. Billy says oh no, and since when have you been doing that? And this is probably a special subtlety from Quetzal again, right? And why are you now doing that across such vast distances? Semiaza says hasn't Quetzal reported to you about it? Billy says no, my child. Semiaza says I don't understand that because this action should be no secret to you. Quetzal already installed this additional device in the month of January, 1979, and the reason for it was so that we can overlook and assess everything and everyone better and can also inform you of certain occurrences, which are of importance for you to know, even if you always remain silent about them with your group members. Billy says I understand, in addition, I am grateful to you all for this help, because this has often helped me to determine my behavior. But you can believe me that I was rather affected several times by all of that which you relayed to me and that it was often difficult for me to put a good face on it. Only, I often wondered about where you got your knowledge. Semiaza says now you know. Billy says that's good, because that was always puzzling to me. But actually, it's good that the group had no knowledge of these things, for otherwise, they certainly wouldn't have behaved so casually. Semiaza says sure, but now they will know. Billy says but why? After all, I told no one a word of it. Semiaza says sure, you have been silent because you knew nothing, but now they will know about it because it is time that the knowledge of these things be made accessible to them, which is why I will transmit them to you in this report. Billy says oh, you, Green Nine, so is this part of the conversation not being led between us alone, but rather quite officially, so that it must now appear in the report. Semiaza says so it is, because the group members should know this now, even if some still aren't able to fully cope with this knowledge. But the fact that they aren't able to do this, this is because of them, because so far, they haven't endeavored themselves around their progress to such an extent as was to be expected of them. And that this progress has not been achieved, is also the reason for the fact that we cannot abrogate our ultimatum, despite all the newest cognitions. In this regard, we are not subject to any deception, because that which we could have expected of the various group members in self-cognition, progress and change, etc., was truly very much less than what we expected of them. Yet various ones didn't even achieve what we expected, which was of rather minimal forms. This was also clearly evident from a recent recording from last Saturday in which Jacobus and Benedet in particular let themselves be carried away to things that not even children do and that should have already long been eliminated by them. What damage they caused with it, the two are not able to recognize or understand in their self-righteousness and selfishness. If our contacts are to continue starting from the middle of this year, however, then the condition is set by us that these two group members thoroughly change themselves and allow no more such outbreaks from themselves in the future. Both of them, Benedet as well as Jacobus, are not so very great in themselves as they like to give this outwardly, which should be openly said at once, perhaps for the purpose that it would be helpful to them. It is not purposeful for either the one or the other to outwardly give or make reproaches or rules of behavior in nice and pleasant or, however, in scurrilous and unfair words, when in their inner selves, their pulsates a chaos of inextricable tangles of an emotional nature. Billy says tell me about it. I myself know well enough that this is so. But what more am I supposed to do than just talk constantly and explain everything and yet always just have to hear the response after me, the deluge? Semiaza says that is known to me, but the persons concerned now actually have their last chance in their own hands. They themselves now have to decide on their own future. If they do not do this, however, then we must decide whether we must discontinue our contacts at the given point in time or whether we must advise you that the fallible ones are to be excluded from the group. But our ultimatum remains until the specified point in time. Billy says I think that's noble of you all, and I can also understand you. But for my part, 
whether I will still hold out until then, I dare to doubt. Semyaza says you should thoroughly think about it sometime, it will certainly be worthwhile. And think of what we decided. Billy says you say that so easily. Semyaza says your wife evidently strives yet again in an extremely best form, and that alone is already worth the holding out and repeated reflection. Billy says you write about that, and I am tremendously glad that she pulls herself together again so much. She also helps me with it very much, for otherwise, I would have already finally thrown in the towel weeks ago. But whether everything will continue to go in such a way, I do not know. Semyaza says you see, so you apparently have a loving help in her yet again, like also with Eva. Billy says of course, the two have, up to now, also made it that I haven't simply thrown everything down and run away. Semyaza says expressed to them my dearest thanks for that and explained to them that through their help, they do more for you and earth humanity than they can ever understand. Explain that to them as a communication from me. Billy says you placing demands. Isn't it enough if they read about it later in the report? Semyaza says sure. It probably isn't for you to pass on such expressions of thanks. Billy says no. Absolutely not. Semyaza says then it is quite right if I express these thanks even to all others who likewise contributed a good part to the fact that you haven't run away in spite of everything. By that, I mean in particular the children, Engelbert, Maria, and their children. Billy says you know that too. Semyaza says sure, I explain to you, nevertheless, that we have endeavoured ourselves around a form of clarification of all things in such a thorough form as was never possible for us before. Billy says yes, of course, I forgot that. Semyaza says that also seemed so to me. But now, my friend, I would like to explain to you the following as I have already indicated, we have become conclusive that for important matters, our conversations shall continue to be transmitted to you. However, this is exclusively valid only for matters that are of importance, of meaning, or simply instructive. Only this conversation and its transmission represent an exception in this form because we think that the matters just discussed should still be made clear for all group members. In the future, however, we will hold ourselves to the fact that we will no longer interfere in internal group matters and we will place the guidance and leadership of the group in every detail into your hands. Thus, in the future, you will bear the responsibility for all events concerning the leading. Sure, if it corresponds to your wishes, we can stand to decide with advice and, if necessary, also make desired pieces of advice of all kinds accessible to the group members in a transmission form. But there can no longer be more than that in the future, at least for the time being. Billy says so then you plainly and simply keep to that which was already discussed at an earlier point in time. Semyaza says sure. Billy says okay, also, I said at that time that it must be left up to me to give, according to my discretion, excluded or self-withdrawn group members the opportunity to re-enter the core group. Semyaza says sure, that shall be so, but at the same time, in these cases, we must insist on the fact that you alone make the decisions concerning this, without a vote by the core group members, as is the case with new admissions. The reason for this determination of ours lies in the fact that most group members are neither able to grasp the facts of these matters surrounding those who are no longer group members nor able to decide about this new trade and with sufficient oversight. They will be caught in judgments and prejudices that would lead to wrong decisions. Billy says this refers, however, exclusively to former group members who were as such with us before the new entrances of the last three members occurred, by which I mean that in this regard, I would only like to make these necessary decisions with old group members. Semyaza says sure, and I understand you. You thinking of the fact that several of these exits only occurred because of inconsistencies and misunderstandings and similar evils. That's why you want to make a decision about it yourself. Billy says exactly, girl. 
you've hit the nail right on the head. Samyaza says it wasn't difficult to grasp your thoughts in combination, because I know your distinct sense of fairness. However, there's one thing that I still have to suggest to you now for many months. You've kept yourself away from every meeting of the core group because you weren't able to bear the incorrectness and altercations and stubbornness of some group members anymore. But since you are now to exercise the leadership of the group again definitively and you have also declared yourself in agreement with it, it is of necessity that you fulfill this obligation again, but at the same time, we don't want to force you to resign from your office, at your own discretion, if the hardening and shaping of the entire group unity doesn't arise in such a way as is necessary. And even though you already said at an earlier point in time that you would be willing to exercise your duty again if we would approach you with the desire for it, I would like to ask you once again, whether you are willing to do your duty relating to this again. Billy says you know my answer. I will fulfill my duty, but I will also provide the entire core group my conditions. And if these are offended against only once, then I'm definitely at a core group meeting for the last time, and indeed, for all times, then, I won't let it be left at the fact that I only go on strike for several months. Samyaza says that is your good right and we are also in agreement with it. It isn't necessary for you to tell me your conditions. For as I know, it no doubt concerns those that you already mentioned to me at an earlier point in time. Billy says you right. These are only conditions that relate to the order and the coexistence as well as to the obligations of the individual core group members. So I don't want to experience, for example, even one more time, an altercation or interrupting during the meetings. There must finally be order and the possibility of a peaceful coexistence, even outside the core group meetings, otherwise, I'll actually throw in the towel. Samyaza says I already told you that we find your decision to be right and approve of it in every detail. It must now finally come to be, that everything has its certain order and that this is kept. As it would be for you. It would also be very unfortunate for us if we had to discontinue the contacts in the middle of the year. We also find ourselves compelled to strictly follow our conditions, as we've also asked of the entire group. You understand what I mean? Billy says then we would, indeed, be in agreement, and everything is now clear, right? Samyaza says sure, and in the future. There may be no exceptions any more in terms of breaches of the rules of regulation, etc., on which we must now also insist just as you do. We have no choice to do otherwise, if now, finally, everything is to make progress and the possibility of contacts is to be maintained. Billy says I've also come to the same conclusion. There must now finally be order and everything must work out, otherwise, there will be no more progress for the entire mission. I have recognized this clearly. Samyaza says that is, unfortunately, the serious truth. Truly, everything would now collapse and be destroyed, if now, everything doesn't finally take its right path. Everything so far would have been in vain, just as this would also be the case for everything future. By your departure, for which, in the negative case, we could not blame you, everything would become pointless, because due to the absence of the head, and that you are, without a doubt, everything would be called into question by the inhabitants of this planet. It would be said that everything could not be correct if the prophet himself fails and runs away. This would inevitably be the talk of the human beings, because they must hear up no understanding at all and also don't know all the circumstances. They would only see your supposed failure and your giving up and running away, but not all the inhuman struggles, works, and efforts, which you fought out all through the years. And certainly, they could not understand that you've done things that are earth humanly impossible, without your having completely broken down from it. They could never understand this, because your achievements are rather the work of a mechanical robot than those of a man of flesh and blood, as you would express it. The truth is, however, that another human being would have never endured this and, already in the first few months of struggle, would have sought his grave or would have been driven there. 
In any case, a human being of Earth would have never been able to bear or endure these tremendous overloads. Billy says must you necessarily also say the latter now, when you already want to transmit this conversation? On the other hand, you just can't stop with your exaggerations. Semiaza says I know why I'm making these statements today and in this form. In addition, everything only corresponds to the pure truth. Billy says I also don't doubt your words at all. But now, may I ask a question about Louis? Semiaza says sure. Billy says what do you think, will he come back to the group or not? Semiaza says I already gave you information about that. The things are, however, somewhat muddled, and an exact result cannot be calculated with great probability. The available facts allow complete departure as well as a return. But the matter starts itself apparently well. Billy says can't that be ascertained more clearly? Semiaza says unfortunately no, because Louis is still so unbalanced that unforeseeable possibilities can be of constant appearance with him. Billy says does this mean that my fears could be true? Semiaza says unfortunately, with his unbalanced and emotional nature, those aren't necessarily to be dismissed out of hand. Billy says then we can possibly prepare ourselves for bad difficulties. Well, then we'll just have to see. Then still another question two days ago, at night and during the snow removal, we saw from the center three orange-colored, large, and smoking lights, which held themselves over the Burkret for about twenty seconds in each case, before they plummeted and disappeared. The first time was around eight midnight, and the same example still followed two times, after about ten minutes each. Was our military, perhaps, at work there, or were these some ships that carried out energy combustions? Semiaza says you're in luck, because I really know about that. No, this was no one from us or from others of our groups, even though that which you all observed looked deceptively similar to our energy combustions. The light phenomena observed by you all were of a private earth human nature and had no relation whatsoever with any flying objects of extraterrestrial origin. Billy says aha, then some happy-go-lucky sorts of fellows or the military functioned there. Semiaza says surely. Billy says well then, I am still to convey rather dear greetings from all group members to you and all your people, if this delights you and the others. This has already been laid on me to do for a long time, if you would come back. Semiaza says oh yes, of course, I am delighted about that, but certainly also all the others. Also convey to all my best wishes, but at the same time, I would like to connect these with the special wish that now, everything will be contributed to the fact that the order appears with every single group member and in the entire community in every respect so that no further difficulties arise and everything can be continued, and indeed, now in the form in which everything was planned. Even if the most determining successes can, perhaps, no longer be achieved or become effective, due to the deliberate and partly quite irresponsible thoughts and actions of various group members, some things can still be saved and be made good again. Thus, that which is valuable lets itself be saved and transferred for the future. If everything should now actually set itself in motion in the best form and if the constant setbacks should find their end, then even new ways could be sought to find a valuable and determining beginning once again under the new aspects, which could lead the successes to great results. But this now depends solely on whether the individual group members finally fit themselves into the order and fulfill our conditions as well as yours. That a change in a human being and his conversion given in the best completion, once he has thoroughly thought about an evil, this has also been clearly shown by our newest and most thorough analyses, in reference to the human being of earth. If something becomes most thoroughly analyzed by the human being of earth, then a few minutes are sufficient for him, as we now know very clearly, to come to a logical conclusion and to bring about the corresponding change in himself. Thus, no excuses can be asserted that one or another human being if he is in the full possession of his reason and his understanding, needs more than just a few minutes or, 
at most, a few hours for a logical decision and resulting logical change. Billy says I know that, my child, and I have already often brought that forward. In which cases, however, there always only comes excuses from different group members, who simply maintain that they need days, weeks, months and even years for considering and a resulting logical action. Semyaza says that is absolutely illogical, and such excuses only testify to the fact that a responsibility and a thorough reflection and logical action are wanted to be avoided. Billy says oh, how often I have already said and explained that. Semyaza says sure, that is known to me. But now, all those, who did not want to recognize this as truth up to now, should once again think about this, and indeed, thoroughly. It lies in their hands, whether they want to continue down the path of the already begun and very widely led destruction or whether they finally want to tread the path of reason, understanding, and responsibility. And with these words, my friend, I want to say goodbye to you for today, if you have no further questions. Billy says I have none, because you've told me everything that I wanted to know for the time being. Now, please greet your sister your father, Quetzal, Manara, and all the others rather dearly for me, and tell them that I am so very sorry about everything surrounding the irrational occurrences of the past two and a half years, during which mostly nothing at all has worked out. If the group members should finally become clear about everything and should finally tread the right path, then I will very gladly do everything conceivably possible to bring back all the joy to you all, which you have lost because of our irrationality. I am relying on your words, which you gave earlier. Semyaza says I don't want to hear, my friend that you also count yourself among the irrational ones, because you have sought very much more than just reason and have also let this prevail. But now, farewell until we meet again. My next visit won't be so very long in the waiting for you, as was the case this time. Billy says that pleases me, and I thank you for that. Till we meet again, and please be of good cheer that now, everything will finally change for the better. Semyaza says I hope so. Till we meet again. The End